Ace and a one. They both rolled uh, ones. They both rolled one. That is very, that's not good. <laughs> Greetings, mortals, and welcome to the first episode of the Tabletop Sandbox podcast. It is also the first episode of our Blades in the Dark podcast. Ever. <laughs> we did record a session zero beforehand to do character creation and crew creation, and we learned a little bit about the world that Duskwall resides in. But all of the plot you will be able to find contained herein in episode one, starting with a little recap. Welcome to Duskwall a bastion of relative safety from the ghosts and demons and worse that stalk the blighted deathlands beyond its crackling electric barrier. Within its walls is a whirling gyre of brutality, ambition, and vice. One of the main ventricles that keeps the dusk supplied with ample contraband to prop up these vices is the docks. And that is exactly where and why we find ourselves here. Bazo Baz, leader of the Lamp Blacks, has tasked your fledgling crew with the retrieval of a shipment of drugs. You've been instructed to board a barge called the Lucky Buck and speak with Captain Filge, retrieve the drugs, and return them to Bazo's coal warehouse. The catch is that the Red Sashes, who are preparing for all-out war with the Lamp Blacks, are keeping a covert watch on the shipment a problem you have decided to solve with fire. Because for our score type, you have chosen deception, specifically a distraction, and for the method of that distraction, you chose arson. So here's a choice for you. You could choose a random building along the docks, perhaps a tavern or even a tattoo shop, or you could choose the drug den run by the Red Sashes a few streets over. The former is possible to draw the Red Sashes' attention, but perhaps not likely to draw them away from their post, just distract them. If you set one of their places of bin, places of business, a fire, <laughs> If you place, <laughs> if you set one of their places of business a fire, <laughs> then then they will almost certainly be drawn to that. Or at least there's a, a higher probability. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what do you decide? I say we the, the target that will draw <laughs> that will be more effective, but draw more ire and potentially more heat on your crew, mm -hmm. or yeah, the one it. that is less less risky. We like the heat. <laughs> you do have a reputation as being ambitious, let me remind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck it. Yes. Then we get, it's two birds, one stone. Then we take out yeah. this one place where we got the, you know, where wherever their connections are, you know, weaken them maybe a little bit, help out Bazabaz a little more. I think it's a good idea. We do have to think they are, they do already hate us. Yeah. And this would definitely incite a potential extermination attempt on their part for us whereas if we go another route and just try to get the contraband back mm. to our friend mm. we're not necessarily directly hurting that's true them. that's true whereas mm. we are but we don't want to hurt only somebody. if they find out it's you exactly we don't right. want to hurt anyone innocent either you know we are depends who you send that's that is true we do have a whisper with us true I mean, I could hit from far away, but I'm not That's sure good. if I could run very fast. Well, if you're... Well, if, if you're far away, <laughs> yeah, if you don't yeah. have to run. How, right. how far away do you need to be to do your yeah. lightning thing or cause a storm? Oh, did I need to coat it in oil so it would catch? I would say nearby, within sight. Because I'm not real fast either. But you could be across the street, you know? You could be in a, a another building You'd be exposing the way. yourself to danger, potentially, mm -hmm. but you could take measures to protect yourself. And you could stay hidden. The rest of us could be... That's fair. Um, ready to yeah. board. Yep. So what's the decision, team leader? That would be... By the way, let's introduce... Yeah. yeah let's introduce <laughs> our, our people and their characters. I think we should start so, with our leader. Yeah. Thanks. So introduce yourself by name and then your character. Okay. My name is Abby, and I'm playing Yagota Stanchik. She is a slide, French? no, 
Polish. <laughs> But actually, British. <laughs> <laughs> we decided on accents on the way over here. <laughs> we had a debate about this. A, on transplant, the way over. a transplanted pole. Yes, exactly. Except neither, none of those places exist in this world. <laughs> exactly. You're just Akarosi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and so she is the team face more than I like to think she's the team the team face more than she is the team leader because she's the only one that has the ability to get out of a sticky situation using her words instead of just fighting. But that also means if you're, if I'm the only one that can talk, if you go to the only one that can talk, then that means I'm the leader for most people. But we all make group decisions. We're democracy. Yes, everyone else is canonically mute. Yes. <laughs> okay, now to my dear sister. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm, I'm Gretchen. I'm playing Antonia Stanchik. Um, I believe we worked out that that's Yugoda's younger sister. You can call me Tony. Um, I'm a leech, which is like a saboteur and a technician. I um, have a, I, it's, I wouldn't call it a problem, but they say I have a drug problem. But I am more of like an alchemist sort of person that um, experiments with technology, with chemicals and things like that, and works out situations in that way. Um, I'm a little bit more brainy, I would say, but I'm definitely not very good with my words, which is why I do turn to Yugoda a lot more, because she's better with people. Do you ever intake the chemicals that you create? No comments. <laughs> Next up, the ginger bear. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> yes. We don't have to keep that if you don't want to keep that. But I like <laughs> it. That's fine. I am Zach, and I will be playing Kavlov. Let's be, I want to be very clear. I am referring to Zach's character as the ginger bear. I uh, don't make a habit of referring to my friends in kind of terms like that. At least not in public. Not in public. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to pick up the wink. <laughs> I don't care how it's heavy your eye is. It's going to have the blinking <laughs> sound like in a cartoon. <laughs> blink, yes. Blink. I am Zach. I am playing Kavlov. Kavlov is a large, muscular, scarred individual, long red hair, and pale, hairy skin. Kavlov is from Skovlan. I'm playing the class of a cutter, so Kavlov is very comfortable with getting into the middle of the battle and being a very intimidating force. But this does not mean that Kavlov is your typical stupid barbarian individual. Uh, hello, my name is Rebecca. I am playing Cerulean. She is a whisper. Um, she is uh, really skinny and um, kind of like mid height. Uh, she wears like a like a black dress with like a habit. Um, her previous job was a nun. Well, I shouldn't say previous. Maybe she's still working as then. But uh, she. Thinks, uh, she's grown up in um, Akros mm -hmm. uh, her entire life in the slums, and she's always dreamed of being rich. So she's joined our she's joined her little side hustle. Excellent. That's a great way for your operation to be described, Yugoda, as a this little side hustle. <laughs> this little side hustle. <laughs> to be hustle. fair, though, you are tier zero, and so well, yeah, that's basically like, what this is. It's our first big job. Are you known by your name? to these folk, or are you known only to them as Spark? Oh, I'm known as Spark. Okay. Spark! And I, of course, am your game master, Harrison Tarr. Let's jump right into this engagement role. We start off with one die for sheer luck. We've decided to target the Red Sash's drug den, correct? Yeah. So, would you consider this operation to be particularly bold or daring? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I would agree with Probably. that. Is this operation overly complex or contingent on many factors? No, we just set things on fire, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's Yeah, I don't think there's too complex. many. It's basically like distraction, go get yep. the drugs. Set it That's on fire. That's not terribly complex. So we don't lose a die for that. Okay, Does the good. plan's detail, which is a deception, you're setting a fire to draw the red sashes away so mm -hmm. you can seamlessly kind of go in and take the drugs out. Does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? You know, we don't, this is a weird one because you don't really have a target. You're trying to, I mean, I guess the target would be the drugs. The drugs, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's different than if you were, say, Bravos or Assassins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Of directly going after somebody or a faction. Yep. But... I don't think this this exposes a vulnerability 
of the red sashes because that's kind of the enemy. So mm. I feel like that would, we have to interpret this for our smugglers. Yep. Is the target strongest against this approach or do they have particular defenses or special preparations? No, I wouldn't say so because it's, even though they're there, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be difficult if they weren't there, that it wouldn't be a score mm -hmm. kind of deal. So we can leave that away. Are there any other elements that you want to consider? Maybe a lower tier target will give you plus 1D. Maybe a higher tier target will give you minus 1D. So, you are not attacking... Well, you actually are attacking the Red Sashes uh, directly as your distraction. Yeah. And they are tier 2. You are tier 0. <laughs> and so for that, I'm going to remove one die. Oh shit. So we are back roll. down to a single D6 as our <laughs> okay. fortune roll We're for good, the engagement <laughs> roll. And if you get a 6... You're in a controlled position. Please if you get a four a or five, you're in a risky position. And if you get a one to three, you're in a desperate position. Okay. When we kick off this score. I can't handle this. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> that is a two. All right. We begin in a desperate position. So, yes. I imagine that you have like split this. into two teams, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. Who is on retrieval, drug retrieval team and who is on distraction team? I'm on retrieval. Retrieval. Yes. Distraction. Okay. And then, so, so Spark and Tony <laughs> are on, on arson We're detail. We're arson team, yeah. And you go ta. Is that what we decided on? Tuh. Go ta. You go ta. Go ta. <laughs> you go ta. Uh, <laughs> you go ta and Kavlov are on... Uh, retrieval, retrieval detail on yeah. on mule detail. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Sweet. Now going into this, what do we have to decide? We do. Oh, we do have to decide on your loadouts going into this. So you don't have to decide on which specific items to bring. You have to decide what you want to look like. If you choose a light load, those are all things that can be concealed on your person. <coughs> you look like a person out. Uh, doing their business normally. If you choose a normal load, you look like you're equipped, but not necessarily like you're uh, up to no good. You could just be working or just that's the way you walk around, but it, it draws a little bit more notice than a light load. And if you are choosing a heavy load, then you are basically overburdened and you look like you're ready for war kind of deal like backpacks and side pouches and an obvious weapon and things like that. I also want you to keep in mind, Retrieval Team, that drugs have a load that mm -hmm. will be added to you, and you can't technically go above... What's the, the heavy load? Five. Uh, six. Oh. Six. Oh. You can go above that, up to nine, I believe, but if you go above six load, you are basically... Uh, only able to walk slowly. Okay. So that's like a heavy, heavy load that you've just taken. Gotcha. You had that one extra stick in your inventory that's weighing you down. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you do not know exactly how many drugs there okay, are. Okay, cool. And or how much drugs. I sound like somebody who doesn't use drugs. <laughs> and that's yeah. accurate. <laughs> Can you remind us, like, what the, the, and the items in here like we have like items in those are your things. personal items yeah. that you only your playlist gets access yeah. to the ones on the right in the white area are your standard standard items cool. that mm -hmm. everybody has access to but again you don't have to choose it until it's relevant cool. so when you run into oh. a situation you look down and you be like oh this would be really useful here you check that off that counts as one load but you you give yourself a cap of how many load you're carrying and if anything has two boxes it counts as two load and you mm -hmm. have to fill both those boxes in uh, mm -hmm. This is where pencils are key for this game. But what are you deciding on for your loadouts? I'm how heavy go are light. you going? Okay, I'm you going, going normal. normal. You're going normal. Yeah. I'm okay. going light. I'm, I'm gonna go normal. I'm gonna have to carry the drugs. Yeah, well, I'm, maybe I'm expecting I'm carrying so mostly things to help actually. us start a fire. So I'm gonna sure. go with normal load, and then sh she's light, so we we can still move quick. Cool. Yeah, I don't think you're slowed down until you take heavy. Fair enough. And then you're not really slowed down until you go above six. We just don't want to risk it. Okay, so we have our loadouts. Yes. We've done our engagement roll. We start in a desperate position. How do I want to do this? Because we've kind of split the party. Did you guys fuck it up? Did you guys <laughs> set yourself on fire? We probably did. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like waiting there. For the like, waiting the for the signal, signal. <laughs> and then we just see like these two running down the street. 
<laughs> on fire. You decided that setting an exterior fire a fire <laughs> far uh, setting an exterior fire would be significantly less effective than if you were able to sneak into this drug den and set something ablaze in the dry timbers of the attic. And so, as Spark and Tony slip through a second floor window, having, like, there's a very kind of tight alley where you're actually able to lean across from a fire escape mm -hmm. on one building and just barely step across to the window, the second floor window of this drug den <laughs> on the other side. You kind of step in through the window, you both get in, close the window behind you, and then you immediately hear somebody coming up the stairs because you're kind of in at the top of a staircase. And so without thinking, just reacting, you tuck into the nearest door. And as you kind of close it quietly behind you, you turn around and you see that you are in a room with four red sash swordsmen <laughs> who are kind of quietly playing a game of cards. And they all just kind of look up and see the two of you kitted out, or at least unfamiliar scoundrels kind of hiding from whoever was coming up the stairs right in front of them. Uh -huh. Kavlov and <laughs> Yagoda. We got this. We got this. You are in an alleyway looking uh, over the docks and you see the barge, the lucky buck that you are supposed to board and interface with Captain Filge to get your drugs. You've noticed through some surveillance that there are a few subtly disguised Iruvian swordsmen, which you assume to be red sashes, even though they are not wearing their iconic red sash that would kind of defeat the purpose of stealth. But you have spotted a few who you think to be uh, the lookouts. You've sensed some tension among them, boredom turning into nervous energy, and as you're waiting for the distraction to kick in, you see two of them kind of have this conversation, one of them tap the other on the shoulder, and they go and move to board the barge. Instead of uh -oh. just keeping a lookout, taking matters into their own hands. Team Arson, what do you do? <laughs> you are in a room, there's a, a window <laughs> uh, looking out onto the street, but it's kind of darkened and reflected off of by the candlelight in here. And there's like one dim flickering electric bulb on the wall and there are four swordsmen who all kind of smoothly rise to their feet and draw their curved Iruvian swords with a flourish. Uh, uh, are we familiar with what we both can do? I think so, yeah. Okay, can you give me a refresher of what your character does? I'm an alchemist. <laughs> I, I have, you know, I can tinker, I can, okay. um, you know, make chemicals. I have all that sort of stuff on me. You know, I'm kind of more of a, an engineer, a chemist. Okay. More than a fighter, <laughs> that's for sure, and I'm not very sociable. Uh. <laughs> um, so immediately, I think we have two options. Yeah. We set the fire now, and then just peace out. I got a match out. in my hand. <laughs> well, I thought we were going to use the... That's right, we can use yeah. our match. Yeah, it's whatever you decide to use. Well, what can, do, what can do you, you have set, that we're using? Can you start a storm in here? I mean, I, I could, but then it put out the fire. Oh, I'm thinking about the lightning. Um... Yeah, I'll light a match and drop it on the floor. <laughs> a, a single match? <laughs> no, a few. <laughs> I got a few. I just. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Come on, what, 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 light? God what, damn it. <laughs> what action are you using to try and start this fire? Um, I, I guess wreck. I have a bandolier with. Sure. One of yeah. them is fire oil. Yep. I'm going I to will. It. Yeah. Go ahead and and mark that. Uh, as being equipment that you've chosen, is that one or two load? Uh, that's one load. Okay. But I have only three uses of it, so it's one use of it. So I'm going to say that you are in, uh, you are in a desperate position because that's where we started yeah, off. Yeah, very much so. Uh, but I'm going to give you because you have. Uh, I have one dot and right. 
you have one dot. I don't know what that means. In rec, that means you will roll one d six to attempt this. So you're in a desperate position, mm -hmm. which means that you're going to suffer a bad consequence if you fail, or Fair even enough. if you get like a four to five, you're going to suffer a bad consequence. Yep. But I will give you standard effect. Okay. So that what you expect to happen will happen if you succeed. So okay. go ahead and roll your one d six. All right, you guys. A three. A three. That is a failure. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> and so as you take a couple steps forward into the room and you like fumble your fire oil yep. and it goes, it does open and kind of spill on the floor. But as you light a match, uh, your match is actually uh, extinguished by the tip of a sword as it crosses through that and slashes across your arm, um, <laughs> dealing you a level three harm Fuck! deep cut. <laughs> and I will take this moment to remind you that at any time, if I say something bad happens to you and you're like, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. You can make a resistance roll. I'm make a resistance roll. Okay, so what you are going <laughs> to idea. do is you are going to reduce that harm to a level two. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. And what you're going to do is you'll reduce it from a level three harm deep cut to level two harm laceration. That's fine. Uh, and so like in one of those level two boxes, right, laceration. Okay. And then you are going to roll, or let's see, what's your rating in prowess, I believe? Because this is resisting something physical. Oh. So how many? I, how got, many I have one dot in prowess. You total. just have one dot in prowess. Yep. So you're rolling one D six. Fuck. And you're going to reduce that much stress from the six that you would normally take. Four. So you only take two stress. Okay. Nice. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, but you are still Definitely wounded very stressed. As, yes. you, as you stumble <laughs> back and this accelerant is on the ground, but you are unsuccessful in lighting it. Spark, Spark. what do you do? Set on fire. Uh, <laughs> can, I, can I do two things? Can I- What two things? Can I open up the window that's near us? Or, or is the window near us? Yeah, you've kind of come into the door that uh -huh. was right next to the outside. There was like a window in the hallway, and then there's a window right next to you on the wall on the way in. It's kind of behind you guys as you're facing the swordsman. Okay, I'm gonna open up the window, uh, and then direct you to jump, and then I'll I'll cast the lightning. Okay. Okay. Uh, what action are you using to cast this lightning? I guess I guess I would use a tune to cast the sure. the, the lightning. absolutely. Does your lightning kind of stem from the ghost field? Yeah. Okay, so you're kind of distilling some energy of the ghost field and causing this electric charge to form. And uh, go ahead and roll a tune. Uh, I only have one six edge. One six. That is still a complete <laughs> success. So uh, you do not get the extra effect of somehow like opening the window as part of this. Okay. But you, why don't you describe yourself casting this lightning that um, is distilling from the kind of unseen ghost field that surrounds okay, everyone? Okay, I tell Tony to open up the window and I raise my hand and you see me trying to like grab onto like something in the air and then I manage to catch my hand onto something and I just bring down my hand and then the light comes out. Six, six, Absolutely. And what are you targeting with the lightning? Uh, it, it's mostly the oil, but if anyone's standing near the oil, also them as well, if they're in the area of effect. Okay. I will definitely say that this is a wild thing that you're doing. And so at the very least, these guys, because you didn't get a critical, I'm not going to have you harm them, but you definitely kind of send them sprawling, trying to get out of the way of this crack of ozone and this taste of the ghost field in the air uh, as it just erupts from your hand and targets this, this accelerant in the carpet. And immediately the accelerant flashes to light, first with this flame that's the same color as the lightning, which is this glowing aquamarine that most Ooh. things that come from the ghost field and electroplasm glow. Uh, and then it quickly turns this crimson, then orange, and begins to quickly spread across the very nice rug that covers the floor Fuck of this rug. room in a high-end drug den. Uh, what are you doing now? I will say you're able to open the window. That's not a, window. something that you need to roll. Yep. But as you've kind of sent these guys sprawling, that means they're not immediately like cutting you to pieces with their swords. Yeah. What are you doing now? I'm also trying to reach for you and make sure you get out the window too. Uh, 
We're running. We're running. We're running. We're running. <laughs> okay. We're jumping out the window. <laughs> As you jump out the window, what action are you using to avoid, you know, falling on your head and breaking your neck? Um, ooh, that's a good one. Could I like? Or did you perhaps prepare something for just this eventuality, and Let's you'd like say to do I a flashback? Let's say I brought my climbing gear. Oh, you have climbing gear. <laughs> yeah, then you don't even need to flashback for that. You okay. just uh, you just check that off your gear and describe how do you use your utilize your climbing gear to escape. Very quickly, as I open the window, I put whatever grappling hook or whatever the fuck it is on the edge of the window, and I just propel down really fast. And I'm like, come on! And I'm making sure yeah. Spark gets the message, mm-hmm. and she follows me down the rope. I will say that to do this in a quick manner uh, is still going to require an action roll. Yeah. Might be a group roll. I know there's like teamwork. I got teamwork shit here. Something like prowl, where basically you're trying to move swiftly and and gracefully. Yeah. So that would be the most reasonable or the most obvious action that I would imagine for like rappelling down a rope. Makes sense. At speed. Yeah. Uh, So that's something that you could do. I'm not saying you have to. We could do that. Or do you have a better idea? Um, we could do that. Prowling. Prowl roll. Cool. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. Tony, describe yeah. how you lead this group action as you're trying to kind of lead. This might be something that's a little bit too simple for this, but we're getting yeah. familiar with the mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. So describe how you lead Spark in this group action. Right. The options it gives is... Uh, do you bark orders, give subtle hand signals, or provide charismatic inspiration? I, I guess I'm giving subtle hand signals. I'm just kind of like, you know, just kind of motioning it towards as I'm already extending Is it the rope. And more of a, like a technical explanation of like, put your hand here and do this. Kind of, sort of. It's just, mm-hmm. it's more of like a, like a, hey, Urgency. this is what we're doing. You gotcha. know, it's very urgent. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead and both of you roll prowl. However many dots you have in prowl. If you have no dots, that means you roll twice and take the worst. Okay. <laughs> Oof. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Six and a one. They both rolled oh, ones. They both rolled ones. That is very, that's not good. No. <laughs> I take back what I said I about the I would say, the day. actually, though, that this w- you started in a risky position yeah. because you managed to drive those guys off with the lightning and your plan is kind of going ahead. There's also a raging fire in the room now. Yeah. Uh, and this would have been... I, I need to get in the habit of doing this before action rolls, setting the position and the effect level because then you guys can do things to, like, change the effect level. Yeah. As Spark climbs out the window and slides out of view. One of the swordsmen gets his wits about him mm-hmm. and lunges for you, okay. catching your habit and pulling it off, which is effectively going to add two heat to your crew for this Ooh. score because okay. they have something they that is identifying yeah. of you specifically. But you do manage to, it's not too terribly fast, get down to the bottom and I assume take off running? Yeah. Yep, yeah, we're gone. We're out okay. of there as fast as we can can be. And we are going to cut over to our retrieval team. <laughs> uh, we have a few <laughs> minutes before, m- maybe a few seconds before that fire is set, a few minutes before this drug den that is a few streets over becomes a blaze large enough for... Uh, for it to be a distraction, but you guys have seen these two red sashes take matters into their own hands, and they are moving to step aboard the barge. Just checking, like, my pocket watch. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't they have been done by now? I mean, I think we should give them some time, but in the meantime, I've been doing some thinking. Okay. They don't know who we are, right? No. The red sashes do know of the Crimson Wake. They know of Whether them, but they don't know them. these specific guys know, yeah. will recognize you just by sight? Mm-hmm. Aren't you wearing That's another question. Red. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> they wear red a well. red sash, and I happen to have a red dress on. And so okay. I feel like, and with my fine disguise kit, I could perhaps disguise myself as a member of, at least maybe like a new member of their gang. Mm. 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 <laughs> it's a stupid idea I said would you like make uh, do they actually wear sashes Is they that do th- these identify? guys aren't because they're undercover but they typically mm. do yes okay but also these guys are walking on board so what yeah. do you, you don't really yeah, have we, time to apply a disguise them. oh okay never mind then these guys are walking on board potentially to harass Captain Filge 
or take the drugs or something. What does trans, pow trans go. powder do? We gotta go. Is that an area? Uh, trans powder <laughs> is, will drop somebody into like a hypnotic trance if you, it's kind of like an inhaled okay. type deal. We gotta go on the boat? Let me try something first. Okay, All right, I trust we're, you. We're gonna work our way up, like start making the way towards the barge. Okay. Uh, so we're, we don't have a distraction. Are so. you, uh, how are you approaching? I am going to approach the barge. Um, yeah, and and the there are who, these. There are these two guys who went in. There are other potential disguised red sashes around. How many are specifically watching the barge that I can see? I'm going to go ahead and roll a fortune roll. That's good. So you've only confirmed one other than the okay. than the two that are boarding. Okay. So I'm going to make my way to the barge mm -hmm. and attempt to board. Is that does that guy see me coming? Because yeah, he, I'm going to attempt to command him to let me on, on um, orders from above. You could mm -hmm. basically say that you're here officially, and instead of convincing him that you actually are here in official capacity, make him too scared to to stop you and try and find out. That's really what my goal is. Okay, yeah. yes, then I will allow you to roll command for that. You are in a risky position with mm -hmm. no distraction and just approaching out of the blue, and uh, you will have standard effect. Okay. Are you assisting? Yeah. And how? I could be like, um, just be confident. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be a hype man. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what he said. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you you also just look official. So yeah, you're walking I, with confidence so, behind me. Like, I was imagining, like, we could be playing this as, like, a. You're like literally how we're playing this like yes. i'm pretending to be official and you're pretending to be really mean and like intimidate well yeah. you are really mean and intimidating <laughs> kind of like and like official I'm business and official the bodyguard business and yeah. the bodyguard yeah okay okay uh, yeah that absolutely you walking behind kind of looking official in your red dress mm -hmm. like i'm not trying to be is, sneaky at all that's definitely enough take mm -hmm. one stress yeah. uh and you get to roll with one extra die so i have two in there so you get to roll with three with three okay That is a five for so the your, highest. Your highest is a five. Okay, uh, I am going to start a progress clock for red sash suspicion. And I'm gonna make it a four clock. And because you were in a risky position and you got a consequence, but you succeeded, you kind of walk up and what do you say to this red sash as they kind of move to intercept you as you're almost following the other two red sashes on board? Yeah, I'm just gonna walk up and I'm just gonna say, step off. So he kind of looks up, looks at the red, kind of makes the connection, mm -hmm. and and like has a questioning look mm -hmm. on his eyes, in his eyes, and I'm going to do two ticks on that four clock for red sash suspicion, and he just kind of like shrinks away. Mm -hmm. uh, still still in the vicinity, but kind of backs off a little bit. And now you just have to deal, at least immediately, with the two that are on the boat. Yeah. As they are, you see them walking kind of along the side of the barge toward the captain's quarters, or the, the it would be the bridge kind mm. of deal. Do, do we know where the, uh, the drugs are stored on this boat? You don't. You know you are supposed to speak to Captain Filge. Okay, and he's headed towards Captain Filge. So presumably, mm -hmm. yep. Okay, we know what we must do. Mm -hmm. So as you are moving up on these guys, in what way are you trying to still keep up the charade, or mm -hmm. are you going to try and sneak up on these guys? The um, charade well, now, that mimics well, life. Well, now that we're past them, do you, do you have a way to deal with them before they notice we're here? Because I can smash their heads in, but I don't think I have any special thing that stands out. Um, You'd mentioned one earlier. But like the trans powder. You could. Okay, that sounds sweet. You could try and do that. Let's try it. So yeah, describe kind of what approach you take okay. with this trans powder. And I what will... are you doing? If there is a room or a wall, I can sort of... You can like um, hide behind a crate? Yeah, hide behind a crate while she deals with them. That's sure, I'm yeah. Do. How close do you want to be to um, the action when it goes down? Because you're kind of coming up behind them as they're facing away from you, but closer you yeah. get the higher percentage 
chance they're going to notice you. I have confidence in my friend. I'm going to keep my distance for now. Okay. Okay. Uh, describe your approach and what action do you use to to get close enough to try and apply the trans powder? Finesse, like a silent as a what's it, like a dove, like gracefully walking across the deck. That would more be prowl because okay. that's about moving quietly. You could also push yourself mm -hmm. uh, and spend two stress to give yourself one extra die. Well, one extra die, which is, I don't have anything in prowl. So that would just prowl. give you a 50% yeah. chance of success rather than a, what, a 25 yeah. with rolling two and taking the worst. I'll do that. Okay. So two push stress. yourself, mark two stress, and then roll your one die for prowl. And this will be, this will be, is risky for standard effect. One. One. Love okay. It. Great. So uh, before you get anywhere near close enough to deploy this trans powder, they hear you kind of walking across the metal floor of the boat. Are you in heels? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Like, like heel boots, maybe? Yeah, like steel toed heel <gasps> yes. boots. Steel toed That's heel boots. Okay, fun. yes. But uh, they hear that coming across the kind of metal uh, deck of the, the barge. And they turn around and they say, who are you then? Aren't you interested in a good time? Uh, <laughs> With this way? <laughs> okay, so. I already had it in my hand, so I'm just gonna pretend that it's drugs. I'm imagining it's in a pouch probably. Yeah. Not just like loose. <laughs> Two little it's lines. Like, Actually, it's just smells like, it. You just open yeah, your just hand smells. and there's a perfect pile of cocaine in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're just like walking along and then you're like, here. <laughs> you're like, huh? May I interest you in drugs? No. Uh, <laughs> these guys are on a job, right? What are you doing to distract them from that and make them not suspicious? Drugs? <laughs> I don't know, man. Well, here. Yeah. Let me roll a fortune I, roll I, to see if this could be potentially successful. The only because I, one of them already has a, like, uh, is an enjoyer of trans powder. So. Oh. oh. Nope. Can you tell uh, it's trans powder? So they turn around and look at you, and you kind of, like, hold up your drugs like and look at them, and you realize that that kind of course of action at least by itself, is not going to sway these guys who are kind of on a mission. Can I, like, flashback? I know that's a mechanic in the game. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So what did you do to prepare for this specific circumstance? Can I say I know Captain Filage? Filge? Filge. <laughs> um, Phil. I don't think so, because it's kind of already been established okay. that you're, you're meeting him. Or maybe, uh, but... So what would be your angle with knowing Captain Filge? What would you want to get out of that? Are there any other people on the deck or is it just us? You don't see anyone right now. You haven't even seen Captain Filge. All right, I'm going to yell his name. Uh, sure. <laughs> you don't need a flashback, flashback for that. <laughs> well, like, the flashback is and then the intention the docks, is that like, they the recognize name. my name. His, they recognize my voice. I'm going to say you can yell Captain Filge. He mm -hmm. will recognize his name, <laughs> but I don't yeah. think you've, don't know, you've yeah. met him. Okay. 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 So you yell out, Captain Filge, and these guys kind of look at you and <laughs> draw their swords and start stalking towards you, and they say, what is it you're about then? I'm sorry, I'm State just... State your name and your business. I'm just lost. I, I was told to give this to Captain Filge. Okay, and... <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on lying. <laughs> What what is your end goal with this? To get around them into the Captain Field. Like, well, you want to get close enough to get them with the dust. Oh right? yeah, yeah, that's that, right. I that's, forgot about that. that I'm holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can um, you can you help me deliver it to him? So how are you going <laughs> to convince them to take it? Basically, to get close enough for you to try and transpowder them. I feel like Zach has an idea. You caught me. Come take me away. <laughs> no. Okay, so just surrender. It. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and what action would you like to use to convince them that you're actually surrendering? Swaying them. Sure. Because I'm Go not actually surrendering. I am going to add, because for your failure of Prowl, I'm going to add another tick on the yeah. red sash suspicion <gasps> Yeah, one clock. more, guys. Can I borrow your die? I yeah. only have one. And I like... Oh, that's okay, good. good. That's good. What'd you six. get? A six. A six. Yeah, go. that's a complete success. So you're kind of like, oh no, Kavlov, yep. as you I'm as you ready. watch this happen. She ready. tries to sneak up and then fails, <laughs> and then it's just like, oh, it's all right, take me away. And I think that 
we have this scene <laughs> where uh, you kind of like fall to your knees and hold up your hands to be handcuffed, and they both walk, and one of them kind of puts their she's their sword, and they both kind of come over and Kavlov. You're like, you turn the corner <laughs> ready to fight, and you watch as you just go, <laughs> open your hands and just <laughs> poof this cloud of trance powder. It's beautiful. Uh, onto them, you got them close enough, they both kind of stagger backwards <coughs> and cough, and then you kind of watch as they both just kind of completely zone out, and one of them just kind of like reaches and like leans against the, the railing of the boat, and they're just both kind of like zoned. Can I just tip them over? <laughs> you want to tip them over? Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, can I? Yeah, I'm gonna, you can interject. If no, you need yeah, to. I'm gonna stop you from okay. them over. <laughs> so you're just kind of like looking at this guy, and you're just reaching out. <laughs> and Kavlov walks up and just stops your hand. You really want to make a splash right now? Oh, uh, like that's the whole point of me, right? I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna grab the first guy, snap his neck. Next guy, snap his neck, and then we're gonna keep okay. going. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you were just about to push that guy overboard, and he <laughs> stops you, like, and you're like, oh, with that too mean? Well, and then he just, pussy shit. He oh, just, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he just summarily executes these two oh guys. Oh, my God. Um, uh, what are you doing to avoid notice while you're kind of taking care of these guys? <laughs> to avoid notice? Well, I'm probably going to grab them and drag them back, uh, like, off away from the side of the boat. <laughs> then you um, drop them in the water. Before I, <laughs> sure. Before I take care of business and kind of just... Mm-hmm. But even them. that is, there's kind of an exposure as you're sure. in the dim yeah, light. I feel so. like there's there's no way to avoid that. I'm going to... Um, yeah, I guess there's really only one way to try and avoid detection, and that'd be to prowl, right? If I could try to... I mean, not necessarily. Sneakily. You can you can argue for for... Anything. I'll just tell you where you're at. Yeah. I, I'll say that this is a risky position because basically as these guys are up here and then you doing something about that, physically manhandling them, has the potential to draw additional attention. So you're in a risky position. Depending on what action you choose, that will determine your kind of base would, effect level. Yeah, would wreck or skirmish provide me any benefits? I'd, probably not skirmish. You're not I'm really not, fighting yeah, them. I'm not fighting them, but... but yeah. I if mean, you wanted to I want, just, I want this to go quick, so would wreck, wreck, wreck could do work. that? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and, and roll wreck. Okay. So I've got two in wreck. Nice. So highest result. Is it five? Is it five? Yes. Uh, okay. I am going to say that you kind of step in and you like, as you, as you like, take down the first guy and just snap his neck. Mm-hmm. He manages to like kick out mm. and he catches the other guy's leg and sends him over the railing. Oh. And so there is, as you're like turning to reach for him and <laughs> like drag him in, yeah. uh, there's, you just see there's empty space where oh. the guy was yeah. and you hear a oh. just oh, into the nasty nothing- ink well, black water of the- I was right there with him. Could that I is, have helped out? That is out? the consequence okay, okay. for his, uh, action and it's not specifically heat yet, but basically you kind of like think, oh shit, and you see that the red sash who was there earlier. I'm completing the red sash suspicion clock, shit. and you s- you look up as he takes off running. When has- oh. oh, and I'm also Towards going to tick Towards one the on the blue coat alert progress like clock. When when did the distraction hit? Yeah, I, I will say that at this point, as you kind of drag this one body into the shadows and kind of look over and don't see the other one, no. uh, shit, you kind of look up and you see that there is a kind of crimson glow mm-hmm. illuminating like a billowing cloud of smoke, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and there is the sounds of, of shouting and commotion from a few streets over, and you see that your distraction has finally gone off. There we go. So that guy is probably going to have a little bit of trouble of quickly retrieving right. reinforcements. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's good. That's Yay. good. Let's Sweet. go talk so, to the what captain. Do you do? Let's go. Um, yeah, we're going to go into the captain's quarters. You should know yes. we're here, because yes. I screamed his name. <laughs> <laughs> 
you walk in and you see Captain Phil kind of like he ducks his head out of the way as you're approaching the captain's quarters. And as you walk in, you see that there's this scrawny guy with kind of lanky, greasy hair who wears uh, a pair of stained overalls and has this kind of big bouncing Adam's apple. Mm. And he draws a knife as you kind of fill the doorway with your massive frame, Kavlov. <laughs> what do you say? I'm probably not what you were expecting to come from that beautiful voice. Uh, I'm going to step aside and let... <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the funniest um, <laughs> You see, there's just kind of like a subtle eyebrow raise yeah. at the completely different person who walks through, so the do- <laughs> through the door. And, uh, uh, and he says, That still doesn't change my question. Who the fuck are you? Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Yagoto. Who are you? Just making sure. I have to check my Captain documents. Filge. Good, good. That's what my papers say. Okay, perfect. Uh, Basil Baz has sent us to retrieve something. Oh, he said he was sending somebody. He just didn't say it'd be so. I want to say red. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're looking from like your hair to yeah, your yeah, dress, yeah. and um, and he says, "You take care of those cheeky fuckers that were walking around outside." Uh, mm, they just ran off on their own. It's all right. Right. Don't ask. Don't tell. Well. Just keep a lookout, big fella. And he kind of claps you on the shoulder, and he's like, I'll get to Goots. And you see him kind of take this special crowbar-looking tool, and over the next few minutes, he pries a section of the bulkhead, like one of the walls inside this captain's cabin, open, and he reveals 12 bricks, which is four load worth of trans powder. Wow. Uh, that's ironic isn't that it? You, you had like you have like three uses which is just like you know yeah. maybe like a, a gram is a use and it's just this fine powder that kind of that's puffs out into a cloud yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll say these are b- bricks you know 12 bricks that are a couple pounds each and so it is a total of four load and you can go up to six without being like encumbered mm-hmm. well I don't have any load right now because I like the trans powder doesn't count, and yeah. plus I used it. Right. Well, you did, you did choose a load, load at the beginning, so yeah. we count you as having that much load. You so you can oh. you can carry three. It's just right? undefined as of yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah like, I can carry. I have three. I can you, carry. Like, I can go up to six. Yeah. Yeah. No. I can, I can so carry. So what would that bring you up to? How many load would you have? So you already have the load that you chose. I see. I see. Yeah. So yeah, I can go up to six. So I can carry three. Being heavy. Yeah, that would bring you up to heavy, and then you can. You're at normal, which is four. A five. Five. So you take Perfect. one and you go up to six as well. So you two can both, you can carry this. You will just both be at a heavy load. And so you'll be a little bit obvious in the stuff you're carrying. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe move a little bit slower, but I don't think that that's actually going to mm-hmm. matter that much. But okay. basically you like, it might not be obvious what it is that you're carrying, but it's clear that you are carrying a decent amount of things. So I've got one and you've got two, or you've got three. three. Okay. I imagine that you, because you started with a light load, you have your dress on. Mm-hmm. You carrying these bricks is like you slinging them in a bag, like a duffel bag over your shoulder. <laughs> it so obvious. it's obvious that you're carrying something. Yeah. Um, Not drugs. Because uh, it's 12 <laughs> bricks, which is four loads. So you're labeled. carrying <laughs> nine of these bricks in a okay. duffel bag and you're carrying three. All right. Uh, okay. And you have the goods. Yes. The next step is to get back to Bazo Baz's coal warehouse. Yes. He's telling the truth when he gave us all of the trans powder that Bazo Baz requires, correct? Yes. He makes idle small talk that is uh, a little bit flirtatious, mm. uh, but mostly he's just focused on getting the work done uh, and, and kind of rips out this part of the bulkhead, then gives you all the bricks and then closes it back up. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Um, I'll give him a little kiss on his forehead. Aww. Just to like, you know, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Leave a lipstick mark. Yes. It, yeah. the You're the in a, I'll, I'll say, the what, what, what action would you like to roll to potentially make an ally out of Captain Ooh. Filge? Is he, is that consort? Concert? That would definitely be consort. Okay, yeah. and I would love to roll that. Sure. Which is my two. Which question, please? Yeah, you're in a control. <laughs> I gave you dice. You're in for a controlled your situation. You did. I have them. Uh, and I would say 
This has standard effect. He wouldn't. I do have I'm gonna, pieces I'm gonna, of dice that I completely I'm gonna forgot. See, <laughs> I'm going to roll a fortune roll to see if Captain Baz has a thing for girls in red. No, he does not. Oh. <laughs> okay, highest one is a three. Okay, yeah. so he just kind of like rubs it off and says, don't you patronize me. <laughs> Can I glance and see if there's a wedding ring? Captain Phil is not married. Okay. No. <laughs> Well, uh, but he just kind of like yeah, he's I like be flirting with you. If you I guess men are uh, o- overcomes his initial is. kind of like you know it's obvious that he enjoyed that, but he's like he's not letting it sway him okay. really or consort him to be more specific. Yeah. you're not you're not <laughs> consorting because you're consorting with this ally, but he's not he's not letting that sway turn him, him into like a solid ally he's just somebody that you did business with once okay that's perfectly fine uh yes but as you go there is a bit of chaos in the streets what method do you take to get uh, i'm gonna add actually vehicle. i'm gonna add another three oh no for the blue coat alert oh. alert Oh shit! Track because yeah. there is a raging fire going on. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just <laughs> the, general, the general, the uh, general alert of okay, okay. blue coats. Well, I assume we talked about a route. Back uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Flashback. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, I will say. Let's do a flashback. I'm gonna say this flashback costs you zero stress because it is very doable. We just flashback to you guys kind of sitting around a table with a map of mm-hmm. the docks, mm-hmm. and you guys know Crow's Foot kind of like the back of your hand, yeah. at least the area that you frequent, yeah. but specifically the route back through the docks. So it's kind of like once you're in across the border into Crow's Foot, you're in home territory mm-hmm. and it shouldn't be an issue once you're there. But you've kind of, we flash back to you marking out this route through the docks and then we come back to the present. Back to the future. To you knowing exactly which direction to take from this I just this I just like the image of we go back to the flashback and it's like, all right, so once you two light that fire without being detected, <laughs> then we go in. Yeah. And we, <laughs> without being detected. No issue. Without being detected. No injuries at all. <laughs> As you are moving through the, the streets and the alleys of the docks there is a raging fire and the blue coats are starting to get a little alerted how are you attempting to move through uh because you have a route through the streets but what are you doing to avoid detection because if you're moving through the streets uh there is the chance of that. I wanted to cast that fog while we we're going oh, yeah. away. Oh, oh yeah, as you were running away. Important. So let's jump back to you guys. And very, I actually think important. that you guys are going to intervene yeah. at this point. Okay, I think at this point, um, we're already making some way. Uh, and then our plan was, uh, our meetup point, I would cast the fog. And mm-hmm. so like they wouldn't really see anyone who's in the area. Yeah. And then we would just kind of like... Disappear. <laughs> we Well, I don't know if we want to go there together or we all go our separate ways. And then we meet again back at the the place that we're supposed to drop off the drugs. Yeah. Well, well pro- here, let's let's do this. You Do you drop the fog to get away, basically to confuse the direction which you leave in? Or do you... Because we did jump right out a, of a burning building. Yeah, you did building. run out of a burning building in kind of plain view. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that when you drop the fog? And do you have like a limited use of that? Uh, it takes two stress, so I, I mark two stress Gotcha. Already. Perfect. Um, For the lightning? Yeah. Uh, or well, that move in general. I have a smoke gotcha. bomb. That could also work. Okay. So do, do you want to drop the smoke bomb as you're leaving? Yeah. I'll drop the smoke bomb as we leave, and then okay. you drop the fog later mm-hmm. on, because I don't want well, you to sure. yeah, stress. Okay. So yeah. I will say that you drop the smoke bomb and take off, and because you succeeded on getting out, yeah. and then we kind of cut to you both coming together at the rendezvous point Mm -hmm. uh, or you guys come to the rendezvous point and you cast the fog to obscure it. Mm -hmm. Is that more stress from you? Yeah. So you kind of set this fog up and when you guys come around the corner with the drugs kind of packed into your gear and you see this kind of these whispers of fog, you're like, oh, this is Spark. This is where we need to be. We're in the Mm -hmm. right spot. And so we all kind of come together in a place not too far from either the barge or the the drug den. And so you guys are still not out of hot water, but you have reconvened as a group. And now you have to get through the docks back into Crow's Foot, back to the coal warehouse. So what do you do to avoid detection? Well, I think we should first redistribute the load so mm-hmm. you guys don't look so sketchy because yep. we still have some 
base. Oh wait, no, I'm at normal. But you you went light, didn't you? Yeah, and yeah. I'm not really carrying anything actually. Okay, can you take? So you uh, are you because are you light. chose light. Yeah. So you're carrying three, but you could take two more and be at normal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we each give her one. Yeah. We each okay. give and spark one. So now we have three people at normal yep. yeah. and mm-hmm. one at light. This or is good. And you're, you're at, I, w- I was at normal. So four people at normal. Yeah, yeah, That's we're good. much less suspicious yes. if somebody were to see you. Yes. yes. I think that was a good first step. And then oh, we, we have we mapped out home. how to get back where we're supposed to go, right? To Baza Baza's or to our safe house, right? Yes. You yeah. have a route. We have a route. But as you are going, des- describe like the method at which you are moving. I just I would like to see if the if there's commotion that we should avoid, I don't know, like get a lay of the land, see if we should yeah. be stealthy or if we could just be I casual. I think, yeah, I think our best route is to just walk back casually. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If people are making Keep too much eye, eye contact, I'm going to stare at them back. And uh, eliminate them, yeah. Get them to look away. I mean, um, I'm always and a fan if, of telling the truth. And if we see blue coats <laughs> that, uh, if we see blue coats, we dip and we. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We know so, what like, to do. We stand like, we like hug the shoulder kind of thing. Yeah. Like if we need yeah. to pull over, mm-hmm. we pull over. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Okay. But like, we're in no hurry. We have nothing on us. We look completely normal. We look exactly. completely normal. Except you don't have a habit on anymore. And yeah. I they lost know it. that a woman in a red dress was walking on the boat. I mean, we one, don't- <laughs> one guy does. Okay. Who knows who he's, he was able to communicate that with by now. Mm-hmm. Let's hope that that's true. It's, there's also a lot of commotion over there, so hopefully we cause enough distraction that the word didn't get out quick enough, you know? Yeah. <laughs> two bats, two bats. Yeah, let's see. So you specifically said that if anybody gets too nosy, you're going to to intimidate them. Yeah. yeah. Command is, yeah. command obedience with your force of personality. Yeah. Intimidate or threaten. Yeah. Okay. All right. Four. Four. Okay, so that is this. I would say you are in a risky position, right. uh, and so you successfully get you know don't run into any trouble as you're kind of forcing your way through the streets, just giving off this vibe of "don't fuck with us." Yeah. But I am going to say that you draw attention because of it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to add two more heat. Okay. Be, so that's the trade-off. You're getting home, yeah, but at the cost yeah. of being more notable. It's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I will say that with that role, I'm cool with saying that you get back to the coal warehouse, and we Yay. have completed our first Yay. score Let's go. successfully. Without, without a hitch. No, yeah, without no issues. This was, <laughs> we no we recap after we're like, did your plan go perfectly fine? Yep, yep, Perfect totally. 100%. Yep. Right? 100%. Yeah. No like, issues. Yeah. No detection. Yeah, I saw you guys start the fight. It was a little bit late, but you are You know, it didn't catch good. as quickly as we thought oh, it would, but there was totally no issue. No Is issue. that a gash on nope. your arm? Nope. Just clutching a bleeding arm. I lost it on the way back. We... We need to get you to a saw sawtooth. Yeah, sawtooth. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> we need to get uh, to a saw before we actually <laughs> jump into downtime, which will be next episode. Let's. So we're gonna handle the beginning of downtime without okay. getting into your specific like projects and things like okay. that. Like, okay. So we're that? gonna handle the payoff uh, yes. and heat. Money. And we, I think, we'll then do. Uh, entanglements and downtime activities as at least the start of our next episode. Payoff. After a score, PCs take stock of their income from the operation. A successful score generates both rep and coin. The two earns, the crew earns two rep per score by default. So, go ahead and mark two rep on the crew sheet. Okay, okay. Yeah. If the target of the score is higher tier than you, pl- take plus one rep. If the target of the the score is lower tier, you get minus one rep. I'm going to say... They're higher, right? They're higher by two, but because you weren't targeting a specific... Yeah. Like, you only kind of were, but the actual target was the barge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say you get plus one rep, not plus two, even though they're two tiers higher than you. I'm happy with it. Um, If your crew... uh, That's just an example. If you keep the operation completely quiet so no one knows about it, you earn zero rep. No well, we don't have to worry it. about that. Uh, about? The crew earns coin based on the nature of the operation and or any loot they seized. Uh, this is a standard score decent loot, so you can you can go ahead and add six coin to the crew's uh, money. There should be a slot for I that. I see. Mm-hmm. 
recorded on the crew sheet. Uh, but let's do heat. Duskval is a city of prying eyes and informants, both living and ghostly. Anything you do might be witnessed. And there's always evidence left behind. To reflect this, your crew acquires heat as they commit crimes. After a score or conflict with an opponent, your crew takes heat according to the nature of their operation. Would you say this was smooth and quiet? <laughs> Low exposure, mm -hmm. contained, yep. standard exposure, Definitely. loud and chaotic, high yep. exposure, or wild, devastating exposure. I think it was standard. I mean, we, I don't argue that. You I think, think it was that was standard. contained? <laughs> yep. Uh, you did commit we arson. Did. <laughs> we commit arson. That's pretty good. Contained Double arson. Homicide. Well, oh yeah, there was. Yeah. You did kill two people. At least one people. died. One oh, died off screen. Right. So. Yeah, it's good that you got out of there quick because whenever there's a death, the death seeker crows come out and the spirit wardens are not far behind. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I don't um, think this is contained at all, you guys. I, no, it wasn't honest. contained. I'm not gonna make you in front do of wild, people. which would be it taking wasn't wild, six no. heat. <laughs> yeah, that would have been the wanted the, level, whatever that means. The red sashes in totality are coming down on us and chasing us on back. On the boat, yeah. That would be yeah. like a full-on assault on the red sashes. Goddamn. Where you just assault down. from the outside in the middle of the street with like throwing explosives at the building. Exactly. But I am going to make this loud oh and God, chaotic high idea. exposure. <laughs> You're yeah. so right. It was. Uh, which is four heat. Goddamn. Add it to the then, four we already had. In addition Shit. to the four you already have. Add plus one heat. Get for a high profile or a well connected target, plus one heat if the situation happened on hostile turf, no. Add plus one heat if you're at war with another faction, no. Add plus two heat if killing was involved. Yeah. What does it mean when we're for in the wanted each level? One or so <laughs> <laughs> it tipped over. It tipped over. What happens is you mark one wanted level yeah. and clear your heat. Oh, okay. At least at least someone wants us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when your heat level reaches nine, you gain a wanted level and clear your heat. Uh, oh, any excess heat rolls over. Okay, so we got so one you get heat. one on the okay. new one. The higher your wanted level, the more serious the response when law enforcement takes action against you. They'll, they'll send a force of higher quality and scale. Also, your wanted level contributes to the severity of the entanglements that your crew faces after a score, which we will be dealing with early on next session. Basically, I'm going to roll an entanglement and then we will have a scene or maybe a couple scenes related to that specific entanglement because things are always messy. Uh, one, the only way to reduce your crew's wanted level is through incarceration. When one of your crew members, friends, contacts, or a framed enemy is convicted and incarcerated for crimes associated with your crew, your wanted level is reduced by one and you clear your heat. <laughs> I was just going to say, we got to frame someone. got to frame someone. Uh, <laughs> 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 you should keep this in mind and know that acting sooner means far less severity. Also, maybe doing quieter scores next time. Ellen. I feel like for your first we score, though, that makes sense. Yeah. No, we did great. Uh, so now we kind of got to lay a little low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except yeah. The, that's the beauty of it being in Duskwall is you can't leave town and lay low because outside right. of town is the blighted I just meant, Deathlands. Like, quieter jobs. Yes. We could just um, go outside of town and die. <laughs> the severity of the prison sentence depends on your wanted level. Oh. We're only at one, guys. Don't wanted worry. level four is oh. life or execution. Wanted Frame level three more. is a year or two. Wanted level two is several months. Wanted level one is a month or two. I say we just uh, frame out the dock If you only have wanted level <laughs> zero, <laughs> when law enforcement comes for you, it's either a few weeks or the blue coats give you a beating to teach you a lesson, which means you suffer level three harm and cannot roll a resistance roll. That was a, a fun score. It went pretty darn well. We accumulated a lot of heat. I think it went great. There it was, was eventful. No issues. There it were was no eventful. No one all. took a trauma. No nope. one was mm -hmm. left for dead. No. You're fine. Yes. Thank you for listening to our very first episode of this as of yet untitled Blades in the Dark podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching if you're with us on YouTube. We hope to have you back for episode two. Good night, mortals. Cue that fucking music. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>